everyone, it's Mary and today I thought I'd share with you uh, some of the books that I have been acquiring over the past two months, more or less. I've been a little bit hesitant towards making um, a book haul video just because book hauls used to be my favorite videos. I used to watch them all the time and I love to, uh, to make them, but lately uh, it's not so much the same. I've been experiencing some I don't know how to describe it. Maybe boredom watching um, hauls just because most hauls you, you see people just reading blurbs and I just lose interest when someone reads a blurb. Um, I don't know why but I just cannot listen. Um, maybe it's my problem, I know. And sometimes even I don't know maybe a lot about the book so I feel like I'm not giving you enough kind of background and information about the books that I'm showing and I don't like that but I don't know I feel weird not making a hauls just because I don't feel it's quite right to show you the books you know as I'm reading them without having hauled them first which is I know it's something that it's my problem I will get over that as I did with DNFing books because I've been pretty good now at DNFing books so I should be good at not doing hauls as well um, I just felt like I had to do a book haul once I had, I had acquired, you know, some books. And actually two of them I have already showed um, on this channel. So I will mention them first and then I will move on to the books that I did not mention yet. The first book is The Makioka Sisters by Junichiro Tanizaki and um, he's a Japanese author. I read this book and really enjoyed it. It was written around, I think, the 50s and it's um, it talks about the year just before and during the Second World War and about these four sisters that um, hold a very important like family name and they are very much still tied to the old traditions, the old like novel traditions. The youngest of the sisters cannot marry until you know, the older sisters are married off. And the book is just about their family and their um, family traditions and just their family dynamics really. It's, uh, it's a character study more than a you know, plot driven book. And yes, so we have that one. Then I have um, a non-fiction book and this is Vivas en su jardín which would be translated as Alive in Their Garden by Dede Mirabal. And I talked a lot about this book in my, one of my latest videos, so I will not, you know, do the same here, especially because, unfortunately, I looked up and there is no English translation of this book available. So um, this book is, is in Spanish and it talks about the Mirabal sisters, which were four sisters that were very important during the Trujillo um, dictatorship because they uh, were part of the uh, kind of movement that was resisting this di dictatorship and three of them were murdered uh, because of you know their involvement in this in this movement and they were all like mothers as well as wives and just great women and um, one of them did not die in that occasion. She was not really involved in the events and this one is the Demi Rabal that is the one that is telling the story and actually here she starts from basically the birth of their parents and then goes up uh, to their you know, childhood and then um, adolescence and you know to the actual event and also the aftermath and Yes, so it's a non-fiction book that I, I have already read, but I will talk about this in my March wrap-up. And then on to the books that I still need to read. Um, so, no, it, it's a lie, because this tiny little book I already read, it is um, We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. And, okay, everybody knows what this book is about. It's exactly as the title says. And it is a transposition of a TED talk that she gave um, in 2012, I believe. So it's a very short and very sweet little book that is very introductory, is that the right word? You know, if you don't know um, a lot about feminism or just if you, even if you know, you know, um, what feminism is about and you're a feminist, I think this book is very valuable and it's just, um, I think, very 
useful as well but I will not talk too much in detail about about this because it's, again I'm going to just talk about this book in my wrap-up but uh, it's just a pretty little book and I'm glad that I got it then we have a book that I was supposed to be reading I think in January for um, one of my uh, one of the book clubs in which I'm participating uh, in and it is the Tales & Co book club and again this is a I, I'm not sure if this is a non-fiction book because I was reading the blurb and um, I had the impression that this was kind of um, um, you know historical fiction like it is based on true people but I feel like it's more like a short story collection I'm not sure though so um, unfortunately I could not get this book in time to read it for uh, the the you know the book club pick because I had ordered this book and then something happened and they just got lost basically um, they repaid me and everything but I really was interested in, in reading it so you know after thinking about it I was like well okay let's just order this somewhere else and I got I, I got it from the book depository the book is almost famous women by Megan Mayhew Bergman I thought this was easier to pronounce but yes yeah, it seems very interesting because it talks about women that you know are not really that famous even though maybe they should have been so again I'm very excited to get to this one because I've only seen basically positive reviews so yes these are all book clubs pick and we have the pick for March that I should probably start I don't think I will make it um, you know to the end of March but it is the pick for the read around the world Oh god, I suddenly forgot the name. Um, hosted by Mel over at Mel's Bookland Adventures. And I think it's Read Around the World Book Club. Yes, I'm pretty sure. And this is the pick for March, as I said. And this is um, the country that we travel to is Haiti. Haiti. Haiti, I think it's pronounced. And this is Claire of the Sea Light by Edwidge Dantica. And um, I don't know a lot about this book. From what I've seen from people that already got to this book as they should have been almost the end of March. Um, I, I think it's going to be a very good book and it talks just about this girl that um, disappears, maybe she ran away, well she disappears, she goes missing and, and this book is about the search of, of this girl and also about things that went missing in general as I got from the blurb. So, don't know a lot about this, but I have good vibes regarding the story, so hopefully I would like this one. Then we have, um, this was the pick for February of um, the Tales & Co book club. Uh, I didn't mention before that is hosted by um, Yamani over at The Skeptical Reader. But um, again, I'm late to the game, but I'm really enjoying this book. I'm actually reading it right now, and it is The Last Quarter of the Moon by Chi Chi Chan? It's, uh, it's a Chinese author and it talks about a tribe um, in China during the 30s and 40s. Well, actually we're, we're in the 50s now because it's a story that is told from the perspective of this old woman that is almost, that is around 90 years old um, at the present when she's telling the story and she talks about um, how she lived in this tribe um, that is called an Evenki tribe that's the their name and they are reindeer um, hoarder, hoarders herders herders <laughs> I don't know they they have reindeers with them oh no reindeer I think it's it's not yeah no s in there um I'm having trouble with English today someone help me this is what the book is about and it's, it's such a gorgeous cover as well it's a bit shiny but the colors uh, are gorgeous even though it's slightly bent and that's my husband's fault, but anyway. And then onto the picks for both book clubs that I have already mentioned um, for April. So I think I will be on track for April. I just, I, I need to do this. I can do this. So for the Tales & Co, we have um, The Birds and Other Stories by Daphne du Maurier. So this is the second book that I own that I 
haven't read by Daphne du Maurier and I'm very eager to get to her because I just know that everybody, well most of the people on booktube really love her and I think what's, you know, what's best than starting with the short story collection then you can, you know, just dip your toes into the writing style of the author and slowly build up um, until, you know, until Rebecca that seems to be like the most um, loved one. So I have this one and then I'm going to, I plan to read my cousin Rachel and then hopefully I will get to Rebecca as well and see if I actually like her writing style or not. But I'm, you know, I'm very hopeful and I think I'm going to enjoy this one. I don't know what this book is about. I just know that it's probably a bit gothic, a bit mysterious and interesting as well. Very eager to get this one again. I will say that about every book basically, but yes. And then the April pick for the um, Read Around the World book club is The Hidden Light, The Hidden Light of Objects by Mai Al-Nakib. And this is the pick for Q8. And again, this, I don't know a lot about it. I, I read, you know, the blurb and it's a short story collection that talks really about a lot of things. It talks about war, it talks about hard times, but also about teenage love and about marriage and about the importance that have objects in our life, I guess, and how much meaning they can hold. So again, this seems like a good one and I don't know, I never read anything from Kuwait, so I'm very interested to see if I might like this one. Then what happened, when I purchased the Makioka sisters, I was on a Japan ride, I don't know what happened this year, but I suddenly got a little bit obsessed over Japan and I started like watching some anime and some TV shows and I really wanted to read as well something, so I bought that book and I intend to, you know, to go on and I just, it's a new world that has opened up for me. I did read some odd like manga growing up, but I never really fully got on, you know, into um, this thing. I don't know what happened now, but I also really enjoy their um, cuisine. So like, I love going to Japanese restaurants and I also wanted to like try and cook something for myself. I love sushi and all that jazz, but I want to be able to cook what they're eating like every day. So I got this book in Italian, although I'm pretty sure that this exists in English as well. It is a cookbook uh, by Harumi Kuriara and I don't know the name in English, but I promise I'm going to look it up and just put it somewhere here so you can, you know, actually see which book is this. But it's basically, it talks about the food that she makes at home. So it's very much, there is no sushi in here and it's just very fascinating. I just need to start and try some of the recipes. Um, it has very, like, good illustrations inside and I skimmed through it and it seems, you know, very even easy to follow and it's just, I don't know, I cannot wait and start, you know, trying some of these recipes. It's just that you need to have like um, some basic ingredients that you don't normally really find, especially where I live. So I need to do like a big shopping session in which I buy all the essentials and then I can I can start and you know cook something from this book but I cannot wait it seems delicious every dish in here seems just oh, amazing so yeah this one and then I could not resist and when I saw that the um, this book came out I just had to get it and it is good night stories for rebel girls too so I talked and read about the first one a lot on this channel, but this is basically, um, I didn't say, um, it's by Francesca Cavallo and Elena Favilli, two Italian authors. So I have this book in Italian, but you know, I'm, I, I will not bother and put the, um, the English cover here because it's actually exactly the same. It's just the title that differs, so yes, I'm sure you're familiar with this book anyway. But it's, it talks about 100 women that are or were important uh, in history. So they, they were relevant somehow and in the first book you have a hundred women and then we have another hundred women here that are different and so you know I've, I really had a lot of fun reading the other one and I can't wait to get to this one as well. You have the stories are all one page long because this is supposed to be kind of a children's book and then you have the illustration in the other um, page. 
So I skimmed through it and I mean I'm very happy because Beyonce is in, in, is in this. But I still feel like Lady Gaga should be um, in one of these books as well. So just a tip for, you know, for Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls 3 maybe. Um, but yes, again, um, I think this is a lovely book and I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of fun reading it. That's it for today. Um, I felt like it went pretty smoothly, but I will see when I edit the video. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, I don't know, how do you feel about book hauls? Do you, like, did you experience the same as I did? Like, now book hauls are not that interesting any longer? Or do you still really enjoy watching them? Should I stop doing them? I don't know, just let me know. And also, um, again, thank you because I reached the, the um, 600 mark. Uh, and so we are 600 now. We are a lot of people and I love all of you. So talk to me in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.